Hello friends! It has been so long. I owe you so many videos, but I had to come back and do this one first in celebration because I have hit a major milestone and I have finally completed a whole insert in my traveler's notebook. I usually switch papers, I get bored, I switch media, I, I leave these unfinished for the most part. So it's kind of a big deal that I managed to fill one and it took me five months. Uh, I underwent a real creative transformation while I was doing it and really found a look that I like and a style that I like and I'm excited to show it to you. So let's get started. So in my traveler's notebook, I keep my master wallet and my bullet journal that I barely use anymore because I don't have much to plan these days. And then this cover for my art journal in the back is actually standalone. It's not connected to the book itself. And that's so that I can keep pockets inside that will go with me no matter what. And they keep my tippins and my little sketches and my tape and an extra sheet for my Polaroid printer and all that kind of jazz. So start at the beginning here. Uh, as you can see, I started this in May and I was playing around with some sketches and some different tip-in ideas, just brown paper from a bag. And for most of this, I use tissue tape for, uh, uh, it's bookbinding repair tape for my tape because it goes down almost completely transparent, but it has a really nice texture to it. Uh, so it's not quite like scotch tape, but it is very transparent. So that is that. And this is about as simple as my journaling ever got, just one sentence. But honestly, on most of my pages, it's just a paragraph or two about my day. Sometimes it's not even complete sentences. I've never been a good, consistent, detailed journal keeper. So this, again, is such a monumental accomplishment for me to even fill one of these. Uh, and to consistently journal in it as well. What I really love about this insert is that it starts and ends with a trip to Kansas City with my daughter. So this is the first of those trips and I bought my first Escoda travel brush, the first of many, and I didn't have any paper with me to do a tip in here so I actually used the feeder sheet from my Polaroid film, which of course was the perfect size because it's meant to go through the printer before the pictures. Uh, but since then I started carrying tip-in paper with me to put these on because I got tired of sticking them directly to the page. And also if I do that and then I heat the other side of the page, the thermal photos are going to warp. Sometimes they'll bubble, sometimes they'll change color, which is fun when you want to do it and not fun when it's part of a cohesive look. Uh, and this is still, this is even as early in the book as this is, it is the building blocks of my style for the rest of the insert, which is there's sketches in the background, there's watercolor washes, and there's Polaroid zip prints. So this trend, this theme has continued through the entire insert. So I do really like that style. And then on all of these, I have gone over with my technique to make glossy photos matte, which I'll link to you. And I've gone in with Mod Podge super chalky matte medium and covered all of these photos with a cosmetic sponge to make them look matte. On to the next spread. This is from the day I got my first stick and poke tattoo, which was a lot more fun than getting a regular tattoo. And for both of these backgrounds, I used distress stains. Over here on Memorial Day, we went to my Oma's grave and I did a quick sketch of her with a Stabilo pencil uh, and moved that around with some water. And then these are the flower petals that I collected from around the cemetery that were just kind of wafting around on the ground because it was Memorial Day. And I thought they would make a really nice fascinator for her. So over here again, I'm using a tip-in that's backed with an index card this time that I modified with some Distress Oxide ink. And then I went with that theme for these colors as well. I drew this in fountain pen and moved the fountain pen ink around. And then this selfie here, I discovered that Stabilo Marksall pencils will actually draw beautifully on Polaroid zip prints, Polaroid zinc prints rather, on the glossy paper. Uh, unsurprisingly, the marks all pencils do mark that. So that was a great discovery and you'll see more of that a little bit later. And this one over here is a selfie from when I had unfettered access to a color laser printer 
Those were the days. Again, same deal here. We've got a sketch, we've got a watercolor wash in the background, we've got my journaling over the top, and we've got some photos. It's just, it's that kind of theme the whole way through. My pages don't feel very well-rounded unless they have all of those things. So coming over here, I'm still trying to find my way with the tip-ins. I haven't quite, by this point, this is in June, I haven't quite found what I'm looking for as far as tip-ins go. But I'm playing with index cards. This is a fancy index card with not a lined background, but little plus symbols is the background. And then this is a colored one with pictures of my daughter. This is a watercolor sketch of some boots that I bought. And over here we have another Stabilo Marksol. Actually, I think this is graphite wash. So the water soluble graphite pencils of some trees. And then I took that tissue tape that's so thin and wonderful and I used it to seal in a clover flower and that worked really well. So I highly recommend that if you like pressing flowers and you want to preserve them in your traveler's notebook or in any art journal that you use, the tissue tape works really well. It's in the book binding section of most art supply stores. Now I'm also still playing around with washi tape here. Haven't quite found what I'm looking for with washi tape. But I do have another video in the works that is going to show you a different type of tape that I'm using that I really like how it's being incorporated into my layouts. And it kind of does double duty and it adds a lot. So keep an eye out for that video coming up soon. This background is a xylene transfer of a Xerox copy of a photo that I took on the bus. And that came out just beautifully. I love the fresco look of xylene transfers. It's so thick and so cool looking and so bright. And then just a tip in on some old ephemera and a photo from my day. Same deal over here. I just used the Instax print directly in as a tip in. This sketch was where I felt like I started to hit my stride with the sketches, the watercolor in this book. I was so happy with how this turned out. It was direct watercolor over a very light mechanical pencil sketch and I'm moving around too much to really show you clearly but I was just very very pleased with that. Moving on we get pretty sparse. I skipped a couple months here. This is mid-June and this is late August and this was a sketch with peerless watercolors which I don't use very often uh, but I did want to try them again and just give them another shot. And then over here, we're getting into the end of September. So again, I'm very sparse as a journal keeper. I just don't do it enough. But, uh, and this page is actually a little busy for me, but I do really like how it captures the mood of the day. I was traveling, I was driving for eight hours and it rained on me the whole time. And I met a really cute dog at the gas station. Now I am in the midst of a trip to Tennessee and to Pennsylvania. Same trip, two different destinations. So this is the statue of Athena that's inside the Parthenon in Centennial Park in Nashville. And I was very, very happy with how this sketch came out as well. This insert is one that I made myself out of paper that Target sells, I think in the Kid Made Modern line as marker and paint paper. It's very cheap stuff, but it holds up really, really well. And I just really loved how thick the watercolor went on here, even though it was very diluted, it was very saturated and the paper just accepted it beautifully. So this is a full spread for one day, which is very rare for me. I usually do one day per page, but this day filled up a whole spread. And then this background over here is actually a tip in that I glued all the way down. And this is just when I was playing on some cheap watercolor paper with Bloodstone Genuine Daniel Smith watercolor, which I really love the granulation and it made such a cool background. Now moving on, I made it down to the Murfreesboro Greenway, which I lived in Murfreesboro for three years a while back and I loved the Greenway, it's so beautiful. So I went for a walk down there and this is a rusted trash can lid that was along the path. And this is where the Stones River goes up alongside the Greenway. Super beautiful, it was a lovely day. And then I made it to Philadelphia and I went to the store of my dreams, Omoi Zaka, full of imported Japanese stationery, including this fountain pen, the Traveler's Company fountain pen that I splurged on because I was waiting until this trip to buy it. I was so excited. 
So that was super cool. Here's some more of the Marksaw pencil over a Polaroid zip print. So I printed this photo in black and white. I went in first with red Marksaw and then I blended it with yellow Marksaw and then did uh, some light green over my shirt. And I just really like that effect and I'm gonna use it more. I didn't use it too much so far just because I tend to make my Polaroid zip prints super saturated anyway. But the ones that I do black and white I think will really benefit from this. And then this abstract background, again, is a point where I was like, oh yeah, I'm hitting something good here. I don't know quite what I'm getting at yet, but I really like it. This is the view out my window on the plane. I had polarized sunglasses on over my regular glasses and the windows of the plane are polarized too. And when you get two polarized lenses working together, you get these crazy colors. So I just really abstractly put that in my journal just to remind myself of how cool it looked didn't quite capture it, but like I can remember that it looked pretty awesome. So again, here's the tip-in situation where I wanted to preserve this. It held a lot of photos, but I didn't like that it covered up my background. So I'm still playing with that. I come over here and I get to a nice spread of two days, um, which are two days apart actually. I skipped a day in the middle and uh, felt really good about how cohesive this whole spread looked actually. So this is um, in Little Italy in Philadelphia. There was a little neighborhood down an alley that I thought was super cool. And then this was in the neighborhood that I was staying in. This was where I ate lunch that day. And this was the label from the tape that I bought at Omoizaka, which MT tapes, they use their actual tape paper as labels. So you can just label or you can tape things with the label from the packaging, which I think is so cool. And then I did my actual journaling on a tip-in that I painted on just playing around with Shadow Violet, which is still my favorite uh, Daniel Smith color for working in tip-ins and doing any kind of gray, honestly. If you see a gray in my journal, it's going to be Shadow Violet. And then over here, I skipped a day for travel, I came back to Tennessee, and then I went to Kentucky to set up for my best friend's wedding. And this was a camp out wedding, so this is a very abstract sketch of the view from my tent. And this is the horse that I met and made friends with. He was super sweet. And it was really cool. This is the uh, wedding team, awesome. The whole bride's party came out a day early to set up and camp out and get things ready for the wedding. So then, Came back, had a couple of really dull days. I skipped a couple days. So I fit two days on one page here with a tip in. And this was just a photo from my walk. And then I was just feeling weird on this day. And I just did a weird page. I did this uh, cactus sketch and this face sketch and a background sketch and I put it all together. Uh, it was really fun. It's not, probably not something I'm gonna do very often because I'm really attached to this format here really enjoying how that's working for me right now. And this was a fun break. It uh, took some of the pressure off of me and made me feel like I could just kind of skate by with one sentence and some illustration and it was fun. Just not something I'm gonna repeat very much. Over here is a very high effort page that I actually love so much that it's my lock screen on my phone. Um, if I had to do it over again, I would scan this girl and shrink her about 75% because it actually doesn't quite open all the way. She gets in the way and blocks it. Uh, but really love how this almost monochromatic page turned out. I've got my selfies. I split a Zeke print between four different selfies and did it kind of photo booth style. And they did my journaling on the tip in, front and back, as well as the page itself, which has a sketch of a peanut. So I bought peanuts that day for the crows. Trying to be a crow friend. And then over here, I found this necklace in a thrift shop and stuck my selfie in here on a tip in. On this side, I've got the transparent or the almost clear tissue tape. And then on this side, I don't usually go in for printed washi tape, but I did just stick that in there because it matched the theme so well and was so autumnal. This was the first day that it really started to feel like fall and I treated myself to a walk and it was just wonderful. Uh, and then one more note on this tape right here. This is sticker paper that I have printed with the pattern from a security envelope, which I blew up really, really large. And that's super fun, but the, t the sticker paper was just a little thick for me. So I'm going to hold out for some better graphic tape. Uh, hopefully Courtney Diaz will come out with her soon. I really love her designs and I really want some graphic washi from her. 
So coming over here, I played around with a paint swatch. They make them in the shape of little houses now, and I love that so much. Uh, so that was my tip in for this one, and it's actually a double tip in. This, by the way, this spread is the most pink that has ever been in my journal. I don't know what was going on these two days, but I was feeling pink. And this was an old sketch that I did that has some Bloodstone Genuine and I think some Thalo Turquoise mixed together. Got this wonderful granulation. Uh, and this is a tea bag that I put in my typewriter. This sketch is from an open mic night that I went to that night. And then this over here, I just did journaling on the back of this tip in. It was super simple and I drew some Georgia O'Keeffe clouds and sketched it in. And that was that. I got to hold a cute baby that day. It doesn't have to be complicated. Nothing about journaling has to be like super elaborate. It can just be remind yourself about your day. Give yourself a design that feels nice and, and you're done. So then after all of this work with tip-ins, I really wanted to work with transparent tip-ins, which brings us to the next spread. I went out and I got some of the Tim Holtz Yupo for alcohol inks. It doesn't fold well. Obviously the drying time is ridiculous, but what I love about it is that it brings out the qualities of your paint without interference from grain in the paper. So you can see maybe how almost perfectly my shadow violet has split into its separate colors. Like they shifted it just exactly the way they're supposed to. And I think it's so beautiful on this Yupo. It did not take my fountain pen very well. That took forever to dry. So that was kind of the breaking point for me was it's not that transparent. You can't really see the design underneath and it doesn't fold well. It springs up and it takes forever to dry. So I said no to the Yupo, uh, but I did like how this particular page turned out. We went down to Crystal Bridges, some family friends and I, and this was the path on the way to the museum. So I ruled out Yupo and then I said, okay, why not vellum? I can't watercolor on vellum. It's going to curl back on itself and just look terrible, but I can journal on it. I can stick my photos on it. I can stick it to the page and I can see my watercolor through it so much easier and it folds and it takes my fountain pen and dries relatively quickly. So this was another point where I was like, okay, I'm on the right track when I finished this page here. So I've got my journaling, I've got my selfie, I've got the view as I was on my way to the airport to pick up my husband. It was dark and cloudy and the lights from the airport were flashing against the sky and it was just so lovely. So I kind of immortalized that and then did my journaling over that. So this felt great. And I moved on to use some more vellum as a tip in. Didn't do anything on the back of this one. I like to double up my photos sometimes or journal on the back, but I just left this one blank. And this background right here that is so vibrant, it's almost blowing out my camera, is made with Pink Fresh Studios Pigment Based Translucent Liquid Watercolor. And all I bought was the primaries. So the watercolor primaries, I have a pink, the bubble gum, and I have an aquamarine, so a very green blue, and then I have sunshine, which is their yellow, the only yellow. I couldn't pick between like a cadmium looking yellow or a lemon one. This was the only yellow, but it worked just great. They mixed up. These right here are undiluted, so everything in the circle is undiluted. So here's my primaries, and they mixed up to this amazing orange. These are all 50-50 mixes, so this orange is perfect. This green is so bright and so awesome. And then this indigo really surprised me and I love this one. And then the background beyond that is 50-50 diluted with water. So these are great watercolors and they're available individually as opposed to a giant set like the PH Martin Hydras. So I'm a big fan of those so far. I'm gonna do more backgrounds with those in the future. So that's that page. And then over here, I went back to using some of my watercolor tip-ins just for old time's sake. Again, I have two days on one page with a tip in front and back and my photos and no sketch on this one, just the watercolor wash background that I really liked how it came out. And then my wristband from a show that I played that week. So then last spread in the book, this is another trip to Kansas City and I wanted a unified background. So I did the skyline. It's hard to tell, but this was painted from reference. I just abstractified it so much 
and then I doubled up on my photos on the vellum. So I've got both days on this spread, and then I used the Fine Tech Metallic paints. I'm not sure if the shine, oh yeah, there's the shine. They're so shiny. These are the Fine Tech Iridescent Metallic paints. So yeah, I am really feeling the vellum tippins. I'm still really feeling the watercolor sketch backgrounds. I love how my journaling looks on top of it. And I'm just so, so happy that I finished this insert. You have no idea. It's amazing. I've never done that before. Uh, and then the last page here is just where I test uh, art supplies to see if they will work on this paper, uh, which is how I found out that these markers at Target, these paint markers are actually oil-based and they will bleed through just a tiny, tiny bit right there. So I always save the last page for testing art supplies. And then I have more stuff to use, like this fancy little musk ox that I sketched, and some more tape and some more vellum to just carry with me whenever I end up journaling. I hope you enjoyed this. I will be back with a lot more, and I'm so excited to make more videos. Thank you for watching.